Hello, my name is Justin Render. I'm the Mock Till Product Specialist here at Kinsey Manufacturing. We're going to go over the two larger lines, the 331 and the 401. We're going to hook them up to a tractor, set them up in the field to help you guys out. All right, we're starting here on the hitch on our 331 and 401s. Uh, make sure we keep under that 25 mile an hour for towing speed before we hook up. Also, it would be important to know your horsepower. Uh, keep in mind our rule of thumb, 15 horsepower foot. Tractordata.com is a great tool and resource to find out uh, what your tractor has. but We'll go through and make sure that uh, we've got a qualified hitch pin and a hitch before we go, as well as hooking up the safety chain. So we'll do those first. So now this tractor only has four remotes uh, to be able to utilize. There are 331s and our 401s use five. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the jack into storage position. Before uh, we get started, then we can use the other four remotes as needed. So we'll get the light harness out of the way. So I'm gonna put the jack into our first remote and I'll go raise it up and put it back into storage. Now after we've got the jack in the storage position, make sure we shut that ball valve off. We will unhook from the tractor and obviously if you've got a tractor with five remotes this step would not be necessary. So I put him back in his storage position. So then we'll go very similar. So we've got our wheels, rollers, transport, and wings. So the only thing different on these versus the smaller models is we break up the wheels and the rollers. So are the front and the back into two different lift circuits instead of being one. So the wheels raise the front wheels, the rollers uh, raise the back rollers. Our transport's just the same and the wings are just the same. So. Go through and start with our wheel circuit or our first lift circuit. Now our rollers or our second lift circuit. We'll leave the jack there at number five. Go to transport circuit. And the last one. is our wings. It's a little tangled up there with the light harness. All right, so don't forget to put this storage back up. That way your jack is firmly secure as you're driving through the field. Now that we've gone through the hookup, we're gonna go through the unfold sequence and field setup for the 331 and the 401. So in starting the unfold sequence, first thing to know is make sure that we're clear of any obstacles. So we're going to raise it off the cradles with the transport circuit. Now we're going to unfold the wings with our number four circuit.
Okay, so now we've got full extension. All right, now we'll go back to our number three, our transport circuit. We'll roll the machine down. And we'll fully extend the transport cylinders. So now that we've got them uh, fully extended, both the wings and the transport, now would be a good time to put them to float. So make sure that those circuits are in float so they can contour the field. Now we'll go uh, lower the front rollers or the front wheels and the rear rollers. So both of our lift circuits operating together, uh, both one and two, phase them both directions. Now we should be good for field operation. So the next infield setting to check is our uh, turnbuckles on both of our gauge wheel tires. On the left hand of these should be two and a half from the base plate to the turnbuckle holder. Two on the right hand side for both the 331 and the 401s. They should come set correctly from the factory, but it's a good thing to double check, as well as know how to adjust in the field if need be. Take our tape measure. We're a little more than two and a half. So in the lowered position, we'll get those loose. We'll set the base of the nut at two and a half inches. Now we will raise the machine and tighten the base. So now the left hand side measurement is complete. Uh, we'll do the same procedure on the right hand. Remember the right hand side is two inches. So now we're gonna go into our infield depth settings. So first off, we've got two different circuits that control our depth setting. The front, which is our masters, which have the, the shim stacks in them. And our slaves on the front are both on the left and right hand side. So what we need to do is adjust our shim stack for the front and then we return and do the same procedure on the back for the roller section. So each one of these shim stacks are a half inch of adjustment. Good rule of thumb is starting with seven. So three and four. Put our pin back in and we'll repeat the procedure on the other side. Now we're on to our depth setting for the rear rollers. Uh, they're another circuit, our circuit number two. So we've got our masters on the outside and our slaves in the center. So now we're gonna go through our deflector settings. Uh, this nut and bolt combination here, we can move either side if we wanna run the tail down or nose up position. Uh, also we have five different settings. Right now it's in the storage setting as you can see here. We've got five different sides to adjust from and you'll see those measurements on how high they are in our manuals. But as we work our way around, continues to lower the machine. So there is at the lowest setting. Uh, I would suggest running it right below the storage position to start with as we're doing our infield checks. Also, we have our adjustment here on our rear disc blades that we can make to adjust this outside disc blade for uh, the cutting edge. Okay, so now before we get started in the field, we can do our monitor settings. So for a 331, we're 32 feet, six inches. For a 401, we're 39 feet, two inches. So now we'll get her up to speed and check our field settings. So we'll run her at 10 mile an hour for about 300 feet. 
then we'll stop and get out and do our depth setting checks. So the first thing I do is I take a look at the disc blades to make sure we're completely equal across. That way we're not up or down, that it's level. Take a look where the back blades are running in the profile to make sure we split our difference. So now I check our depth on the wings. Profile and towards the center, making sure our depth is equal and that we have a smooth working finish on the floor. which we do, our ridge removers are adjusted properly. And then the last thing to do is to check the outside finish to make sure that our cover is working correctly, which it looks to be. So that concludes our infield setup.